we go. Nice and steady. Good. Don't speed up. Remember not to speed up. We talked about that. Be careful. No. Slow down. What are you trying to do? Play a Bermuda Triangle Court or something? September 17th, 1950. An article in the Miami Herald tells how several ships and planes have been disappearing in the Bermuda area. A few weeks later, another article reports that the commander of the infamous Flight 19 sent a distress message while flying over the same exact area. We are entering white water. Nothing seems right. We don't know where we are. The water is green, not white. It looks like it flew off to Mars. The plane and everyone in it disappeared right after, without a trace. And in the following years, reports of vanishing ships and planes, mostly from the Army, kept disappearing by the hundreds. Many captains reported that the ship's compasses would go crazy in that area, making navigation impossible. Some ships were lost for years, only to appear later on, thousands of miles away from their last known location. And yes, you are in the right channel, and this is a video about music theory, specifically about chords, or is it? This is a series where we investigate mysterious phenomena and search for the musical structures hidden in them using advanced music theory concepts, numerology, and whatever other weird thing we can think of. Welcome to Crypto Chords. So let's start with the basics, shall we? This mysterious region, located in the Atlantic Ocean, covers an extensive area that could be traced by joining Miami, San Juan, and Bermuda. Many people believe this phenomenon is caused by aliens abducting humans for some nefarious reasons. It is known as the Bermuda Triangle. So this has to be a B chord, right? What else could it be? Also, this chord must have a major seven in it. Why? Because a triangle in a chord symbol means major seven. That's how most jazz players write a major seventh chord. The triangle is shorthand for major seven. Remember, in the old days, copyists would have to write hundreds of charts by hand, and the triangle was much easier and faster to use. This symbol is still in use today. But knowing that our chord contains a major seventh is not enough information to completely determine its type. When we write chord symbols, we assume many things. There's a lot of information embedded in a chord symbol. Remember, as we've seen in our previous episode, a chord is conceived by stacking thirds. So a chord has a root, which is the first degree, and the rest of the notes are always a subset or modification of the sequence one, three, five, seven, 9, 11, and 13. The amount of stack thirds and the types of thirds we use will determine the type of chord we end up with. For example, a 1, 3, 5 is a major triad. A 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7 is a minor 7th. And a 1, flat 3, flat 5, double flat 7, and 9 is a diminished 7 chord with a 9th. When we use chord symbol notation, we try to embed as much information as possible using the minimum amount of characters. To do this, we use default chords and we base our chord notation in three note chords known as triads. The default triad is the major triad. So, if you want to represent a major triad, you just need the root letter. Therefore, when you write the chord symbol with only the letter C, you are representing the default C chord, which is the C major triad with the degrees one, three, and five. The major triad is the chord by default. To write a C minor triad, we must indicate how this default chord is being modified. So we include a lowercase m and we write C m. C aug means C augmented. So every triad, other than the major, 
needs a modifier. When we want to extend the chord to a seventh chord, we use the number seven. But the default seventh is always the minor seventh. Don't ask me why, that's just the way it is. A single number seven in a chord symbol means a minor seven or a flat seven, not major seven. The reason for this is probably to avoid inconsistencies in accidentals and also to eliminate the occurrences of two accidentals in a row in the chord symbol. This way of notating sevenths allows us to parse chord symbols without a problem. For example, if you see a flat seven, you immediately know the flat symbol is for the A and not for the seven. Otherwise, we would not know if this chord is an A chord with a flat seven or an A flat with a major seven. So if I write just C, I'm just talking about a C major triad. Remember, that's our, our default setting. So I just get C, E, and G. If I add a seventh to it, what's being indicated now is a uh, B flat. I'm gonna take a seven, flatten it, and then add it to the chord. So again, by default, when I see seven, I'm automatically flatting the seventh. And if I wanna see minor seven, now I'm gonna make the triad on the bottom minor, and I'm still gonna utilize that flat seven from before, B flat. So now I have C, E flat, G, and B flat, C minor seven. For C major seven, I might see this. So now I'm gonna get C major triad on the bottom, and this MAJ, this is a modifier for the seventh scale degree that we were messing with earlier that was previously flat. Now, will be natural. So now I have C, E, G, and B. And don't forget, another way of writing this is just C triangle, C major seven. So far, we deduced that the chord had a major seven because it must contain a triangle in its notation. And that the original Bermuda triangle chord's root had to be a B. But if I write B with a triangle next to it, then we're also saying this is a B major triad plus a major seven. But we don't know that yet. For all we know, this could be a minor triad with a major seven, which would have to be notated as B, lowercase m, triangle. At this point, I'm gonna need extremely advanced music theory if I want to find the complete Bermuda Triangle chord. I must access my inner spiritual musician. Sorry, I, I gotta take this. Sully, what's up? Gig? Absolutely, we're at. Hard Rock, sweet. Should I bring my keyboard or? Oh, they got the acoustic, all right, excellent. Yeah, hey, Sully, they gonna have those nachos I like? Ah, oh, count me in, all right, excellent. Oh yeah, I'll see you there, I'm in. All right. Where were we again? So, the Bermuda Triangle. Reportedly, ships that have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle experience great disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field. Compasses would spin uncontrollably, making it impossible for captains to set course. So the Bermuda Triangle chord must be a musical structure without a clear sense of direction. But what does that mean? I need to dig deep into the structure of music itself. But that is easier said than done. What do I see when I look at the Bermuda Triangle on this map? Wait, the solution is not in the Bermuda Triangle, but in the compass. Musical structures are best represented when we map them onto the circle of fifths. If I superimpose the Bermuda Triangle inside the circle of fifths, I see there's only one triangle in which any of these notes could be the root. Even more, this triangle represents a symmetric structure with limited transpositions. This is an augmented triad. That's the answer. Let's consider the C augmented triad. It's C, E, and G sharp. 
But this is also an E augmented triad and a G sharp augmented triad. So if you see the notes C, E, and G sharp, you cannot determine which note is the root of the chord. This is a chord with no direction. And it gets even more interesting. The augmented triad only has one mode and can only be transposed to four different keys without repeating the notes in it. This is what we call a symmetric structure. So why don't we go over to the computer so I can show you this amazing fact in Testatura Pro. All right, so I'm gonna load the major scale into the circle of fifths. The top note is gonna be the root of the scale. So if we turn the notes around, we get all 12 major scales, C major, D major, A major, and so on. And we can do this 12 times without repeating any set of notes. But when we do this to the augmented triad, we get C augmented, G augmented, D augmented, A augmented, and then E augmented, which is the same set of notes as the C augmented. If we keep turning the notes, we start repeating previous sets of notes. So in conclusion, we can only actually transpose it to four different keys without repeating notes. It's true we can talk about a C augmented, an E augmented, or a G sharp augmented, but we cannot distinguish between them. They all look the same no matter what root we decide to use. Where it gets really interesting is when we start turning the entire graph around the circle of fifths. If we do that with the major scale, we have the C major scale, and then G mixolydian, and then D dorian, A aeolian, E phrygian, B locrian, and F lydian. And then we go back to C ionian, which is the major scale. So by turning the graph, we went through all the modes of the major scale. And not surprisingly, we found seven modes, each starting on one of the seven notes of the scale. You're obviously thinking, well, seven notes gives us seven modes, but you're wrong. Look what happens when we turn the augmented triad around the circle. Nothing changes. And that's because the augmented triad presents perfect symmetry under rotation. So the augmented triad only has one mode. Remember, the top note is the root, so one of the points in the graph must always be at the top. Look, these are all the scales with only one mode. There's only four of them. The chromatic scale, the whole tone scale, the diminished seventh, and the augmented triad. So now we can play a B augmented triad and add to it a major seven. But the major seven gives this chord some direction. Now I can tell the root is B which sort of defeats the purpose of the Bermuda Triangle chord. It, we lose this directionlessness. We, use this, uh, we lose this ambiguity that the, the essence of the chord is supposed to have. This is a disaster. There has to be more to this chord. My next challenge was to nullify the sense of direction introduced by the major seven into an augmented triad. It seemed like an impossible task, but there had to be a way. So here I have the Bermuda Triangle and the area, which represents the circle of fifths. If I write all the notes in the circle based on Bermuda, uh, sorry, uh, B as my root, I get, now this is my major seven, which destroys the symmetry. Hold on. If I draw another equilateral triangle starting on the seventh, then I'll recover the symmetry. This is the same as adding an augmented triad starting on the seventh degree. And this structure only has two modes. Also, it has the same three possible roots as the augmented triad. Even further, this is a symmetric bi-triadic hexatonic. As you can see, I have in my possession the bi-triadic hexatonic volumes of the Universal Encyclopedia of Scales. This encyclopedia contains all the scales in music, 2,048 scales to be exact. Of course, the answer to this puzzle was indeed to turn the augmented triad 
into a symmetric bitriadic hexatonic. Remember, we needed a chord whose root was undefined, so it had to be a symmetric structure which contains less modes than notes. In other words, limited transpositions, such as the augmented triad itself. Also, a bitriadic hexatonic is a structure made out of two non-overlapping triads. Bitriadic means two triads, and hexatonic means six notes. Let me show you an example. So if I play a C major triad, and then a D major triad, and I take those two chords and I kind of superimpose them on, onto one another, I basically get these notes in order, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and A. This basically gives me a C Lydian scale without the seventh, without that B. So here we have two triads, hence bi-triadic, C and D, hexatonic, meaning six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bi-triadic, hexatonic. So when we stack another augmented triad to our original augmented triad, starting on the seventh degree, we get a symmetric bi-triadic hexatonic. Now we have an amazing chord with no defined root. We can write it using upper structures notation as seven augmented over aug, or in our case, A sharp augmented over B augmented. And this scale has to be in the hexatonics volume of the Universal Encyclopedia of Scales. This structure contains the exact same notes as the symmetrical augmented scale. In fact, it is the symmetrical augmented scale. We're just playing the scale as a chord using upper structures. So at last, the Bermuda Triangle chord has been found. So how do we play it on the piano? Not so fast. First, let's talk about the chord symbol for the B Bermuda Triangle chord. So we're obviously going to need a B, and then what you're gonna see next to it is the Bermuda Triangle, which is just a triangle, obviously, with Bermudas. So how do you actually play this chord? It's actually quite easy. Um, what we need on the bottom is a B augmented triad, B D sharp and F double sharp, or just G is an easier and harmonic for that note. And on the right hand, starting on the seventh degree of the lower triad, a sharp in this case, or B flat, we're gonna build another augmented triad. So B flat, D, and F sharp. So I got this triad up here, the B flat augmented. I got this triad down here, the B augmented. And when I put them together, I get something that's really quite awesomely mysterious, the B Bermuda triangle chord. So to play this chord in standard tuning on the guitar, this is what you do. Let's do B Bermuda Triangle. So we're gonna start on the B, on the seventh fret of the E string, and then we're gonna to go to the sixth fret of the A string, hop on over to the eighth fret of the D string. Your next two strings, the, B, the G string and the B string, are both gonna be open, and then you're gonna throw your pinky down onto the 10th fret of the E string at the bottom. And that's gonna give us, while not all six notes of the B Bermuda Triangle chord um, we got because we got a couple B's, we're doubling the B here and here. It will give us the essence of the chord. It will give us that mysterious ambiguity that the chord is all about. So now let's look at another way to capture this Bermuda sound. And to do that, we're gonna implement some scordatura, which is essentially changing the, uh, the tuning of any string instrument in order to get some really cool voicings and different sounds and effects. So that's what we've done. We've used an alternate tuning on our guitar here. Very simply, we took the G string and the B string, the third and the second, and we just moved them up a half step, which is kind of cool because now on the bottom three strings, what I get is just an augmented sound all the time if I'm just barring across uh, the same fret of those three strings. So let me show you our, our B Bermuda Triangle chord voicing with this alternate tuning. So you're gonna utilize a bar, a half step underneath the root, wherever you want the root to be, so we want the root to be on B. We're gonna bar the fret right underneath it. So we're gonna bar entirely across the seventh fret 
with our, actually that gives us a, quite a cool sound uh, just, just alone right there. So we're gonna use that bar and then I'm gonna create, uh, I'm gonna get the root on the seventh fret with my middle finger, leave the next string open to the bar and then my ring finger is going to go on the eighth fret of the D string. And that's all I need to do. All right, so now uh, we have our guitar in the Bermuda tuning, which is gonna create this really cool, mysterious, uh, almost atonal sort of landscape for us to write or play in. And we can create different voicings that we never would have even thought of otherwise by experimenting with different fingers, like I did a second ago, just letting go of the, uh, of the middle finger and the ring finger. Now I have this bar that gives me a really cool sound. And then I can start experimenting with maybe moving it around and getting all these really cool sounds with our Bermuda tuning. Well, it's a given that you can use this chord anytime you wanna write something mysterious. Come on, it's the Bermuda Triangle chord. But another really interesting place to play this chord is on a 5-7 sharp 5 of 6, like in Someday My Prince Will Come. And you can always use the symmetrical augmented as a scale, which sounds awesome. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. And the best part is now you know how to play a Bermuda Triangle chord. And if you really want a conversation starter and to impress your friends with your music knowledge or give the perfect gift to your musician friend, you need this crypto shirt, which I am wearing to present this video and will also take you to this video. Here we go, nice and steady. Good. Don't speed up. Remember not to speed up. We talked about that. Be careful. No. Slow down. What are you trying to do? Play a Bermuda Triangle chord or something? Mayday, mayday, this is Captain Benjamin Briggs of the Mary Celeste. We are lost. The water all around us is turning green. Mayday, Shh. mayday. Look. What are you doing? I'm playing the Bermuda Triangle Chord. You're an idiot. <laughs>